more. So excited to talk um, and to get started. And I apologize in advance. I had to have my fingernail removed in saving a bird a few hours ago. So I'm currently in a lot of pain, but I will try to be very enthusiastic in this presentation. So perhaps we can begin by showing a little clip and I'll give a little intro before I show the clip. This is a set of experiences that we have done live all over the last two years, involving thousands of simultaneous real people hanging out, interacting, and engaging in ways that were previously impossible. And I want to show you just a little teaser of it all so you get a sense of what I'm talking about when I speak of the metaverse. Now, you're probably all wondering, what is this? This is an experimental community space where we can bring players together at massive scale. I, I can't get over this chat. Look at my frame rate, man. There's 1,500 player models being rendered now. Look at what's going on and how well this game is running right now. Oh, look at that! What? Three, two, one, and go. This is so cooler than any event I've done. Now I happen to know that we've got some streamers running around here. Back in TV. Oh no, that's me. To come to me right now. Oh no. And everyone else get off the lake. I'm gonna spawn something. I wonder what's gonna happen. Gonna you saw there weren't AI or bots or pre-recordings. Those were thousands of real humans from around the world occupying the same space, talking with their own voices, like in this crowd, interacting with live celebrities and performers who are really there, not recorded or sharded or separated from the experience. And you may also have noticed a few other things. Thousands of things rendered on screen vast numbers of interconnected entities connected by the network. When thinking about the metaverse, you really should think about experiences. All the value, all the potential, all the possibility of this space is rooted in having an experience somebody actually wants to attend. Without that, there's no value in any of this. There's no value in virtual worlds. There's no value in the tokenization of NFTs or the creation and sale of digital assets. And this isn't just a conjecture. It's actually rooted pretty deeply in psychology. There's an area of psychology called self-determination theory. And it teaches us that all of us, everybody in this room has deep, needs for fulfillment. You all want to feel more competent in your daily lives. You want activities that make you feel like you're progressing. You all want to feel like you're making meaningful choices in your daily lives, like you can have autonomy over what you do, where you go, and who you are. You all need to feel like you mean something to other people. And these are not nice to have. If you've ever seen Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's actually not true. It's a little bit inverted. Fulfillment, other than staying alive, is kind of the root of human experience. The oldest monuments in our history, dating back more than 15,000 years, predate agriculture. The need for meaning, the need for experiences that, that matter, is very fundamental to who we are. So what has all of this got to do with the metaverse? Well, in order to provide fulfilling experiences, we have to go beyond just video games. Video games only provide a very narrow kind of fulfillment because they're siloed and separated from the, from the world. 
you know, what happens in World of Warcraft stays in World of Warcraft. What happens on the football pitch, though, doesn't stay on the football pitch. If you go to an Argentinian today and say, it doesn't matter who won the World Cup, I think you'll get punched in the face. You know, there are events and there are personages and objects and things in this world of culture we reside in, in sport, in fashion, in music, that tangibly influence the real world in a way that video games do not. The metaverse is not a new idea. It's a very abused concept. It, it's really just the notion that we can live not in one reality, but many connected realities whose connections are economic, social, and practical. And new technology will allow the metaverse to become more than just the culture which we currently experience that's one way, but will turn it into a massive, rich economy of participatory experiences that will transform industries across all of the areas I've mentioned and more. So to put this into practical near-term examples, let's say you're a football fan, soccer. I'm in Germany here, so that's what I mean, not NFL. Um, let's say you're a soccer fan in Ghana or in Southeast Asia. What's the odds that you've ever been to a game? What's the odds that you've ever felt the roar of the crowd or met your favorite player? You are denied access to that vital part of your fandom and your hobby because having those experiences is just a not economically viable thing to do. If we can create virtual worlds that can allow anyone to have experiences like that, that can bring together massive crowds or huge economic groupings of people far beyond what is possible in games today, then it ceases to be a video game and it starts to become culture. It starts to become an economy. And before I talk a bit about the ingredients of what is required here, I want to talk about the necessity. Fulfillment isn't optional. And fulfillment in our daily lives has limits. There will always be a limit to the experiences your life allows you, irrespective of your wealth, your station, your access. There will always be a limit to who you can be, the identity you can express, the creativity that you can have and that you can share. If we were to try to give everybody on this planet the same level of rich experiences as the most affluent among us, we would drain the solar system dry of resources before we even got there. We need better ways of expanding human experience, and that is the real promise of virtual worlds. So why hasn't it happened yet? Why is Metastock tumbling, and why is Metaverse like a really dirty word to all the journalists in the room right now who are giving me the stink eye? Well, it's because there are missing ingredients. Just like with the dot-com boom, there was promise and yet fundamental lack. The Metaverse is the same. The first ingredient is experiences, differentiated experiences. If you take a crappy video game and slap crypto on it, it doesn't become good. You need to create something that is fulfilling, meaningful, magical to people with options. And the problem with our society today is people have an ocean of options when it comes to digital entertainment. So the first step that we engaged in as Improbable and as the soon-to-be-announced M Squared Foundation is building a substrate of technology that can expand the scope of those experiences dramatically. So how do we measure that? One number. Operations per second. Remember this number. This number is the most important single metric when thinking about virtual worlds. It is the amount of information that can be usefully exchanged inside a world. No matter what promises some company makes or what hype they sell, if you cannot exchange in real time vast quantities of information, you couldn't even have this crowd here at DLD, let alone build a space that could house an economy or allow 10,000 people to fight 10,000 enemies like the Battle of Helm's Deep, as we showed here. Um, you need to grow that number exponentially. Unfortunately, that's a very hard problem. When I started Improbable, I thought it would take us like a year, year and a half to get to this point. It's been 10 bloody years and hundreds of millions of dollars. 
but we've gone from a few thousand operations a second to 20 billion operations per second. 20 billion messages a second on the back end, all in real time, all being handled, all so that every person, every expression, every word uttered can intermingle within spaces that would previously have been too expensive or just impossible to build for the vast majority of people. And that technology isn't static, it's always being added to, and not just by us. Soon we'll be announcing ways to create interoperable objects that can be rooted in that technology but run anywhere, that go beyond what NFTs can be, which are simple markers of value, to actual functional tools built on open standards. So experiences are the first ingredient in actually getting anyone to care. But what else? The second is commerce. You see, the trouble with virtual worlds is that they live in islands. The value created in one world cannot be easily transferred into another, and mashing together video games actually can't work. And if you want to know why it can't work, we can do a simple thought experiment here. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Raise your hand if you like Harry Potter, or have ever, if you know what Harry Potter is, raise your hand. Great. Keep your hand in the air if you know what Call of Duty is. Great. Would you like to see a Harry Potter book where Harry Potter has an AK-47? Some would, but you know what? It might break the continuity for a lot of people. You can't just mix together religions and shove them at people like Ready Player One. That was a work of fiction. In reality, these rich cultural islands don't work very well together. And video games are jealous beasts. They've spent a lot of money acquiring users. They don't want to share them. They don't want to interoperate. However, our real world culture is a green field of opportunity. Sport, music, and fashion intermingle every single day when stars from one create value in the other. The problem, of course, is how do you take value from one experience to another? And that's where another dirty word comes into play. A dirty word that has been maligned for the last 12 months and probably now will sound like a curse word, but blockchain. Finally, an actual use case. In order to share value between potentially competitive companies taking and using the same technology, you need to build on a substrate where many different companies can share data, share value in very granular ways. And for the M Squared Foundation, we've built a commerce layer that allows every single company participating to do exactly that. Now, they don't have to use cryptocurrency, but blockchain creates and builds a B2B layer of fairness and auditability that allows those companies to make investments. The final ingredient, the final missing piece is content. And the question becomes, who will be the winners and who will be the losers? And I can give you a simple formula for who will win and who will lose. If you have a massive user base of fans, let's say you're FC Barcelona, but you have pitiful monetization per fan, pitiful engagement per fan, virtual experiences are going to transform your business. They will 10x the value of sports leagues. They will vastly increase the number of buyers of high-end fashion. They will vastly increase the value of talented singers, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, content creators. And that's why at the final ingredient in our network, we've made sure that it's the content creators, the metaverse operators who own the value. We need to move away from the idea that a platform sucks value away from content creators because the metaverse simply requires too much investment for that to be viable. We need to move to a system whereby value is created at the top, at the experiences, and that value is then balanced using utilities at the bottom. And hopefully in the next few weeks and months as we announce more about our project and its partners, you'll see how we plan to build that network, modeled a little bit on the European Union with freedom of movement of people from place to place, with the ability to do commerce without having to worry about regulation from one world to another, but still with sovereignty. And we're gonna be releasing all of these standards and all of this technology to everybody in a way that anybody can use, but which will work in an interoperable fashion together. 
That's our goal, that's our mission. And I think it'll give billions of people who we don't think about so much in this, in this room, the opportunity to actually experience and interact with culture in ways that have never been possible before. You can go to the game now if you live in Nigeria. You can meet your hero now if you live somewhere where, where Marvel stars have never come to visit. And that's the opportunity in the short term. Thank you. Thank you.